Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing Debian on VirtualBox. We're basically going to go through three steps here. We're going to go to Debian.org and we're going to go ahead and download an image for Debian. And that's going to be the latest image which is uh, Debian 10 Buster. And then the next thing we'll do is uh, go to VirtualBox's website, get that download. Um, after that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and install Debian 10 on VirtualBox. If you enjoy this video, make sure you like it. Subscribe also if you feel like it. Uh, so let's jump right in and first uh, we'll go to Debian.org. I'm already here, so www.debian.org. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the CD USB ISO images. This is going to give us all the mirrors. If we click on the download CD DVD, HTTP, go to the bottom and you'll see um, down here different architectures that you can download for, uh, such as AMD 64, ARM 64, i386, and so on and so forth. What we want is the AMD 64. Uh, that All that means is it's a 64-bit image of Debian 10. Uh, some people like also the i386, that's the 32-bit uh, version. So that, that way you know. Uh, let's go ahead. Again, 64-bit is what we want. Uh, scroll down to the bottom of this page here. All right, and let's see here. We have the net installer. So you can see it says Debian 10 AMD 64 net INST. So that's just the network installer. It's going to grab packages from the web while we are installing. Uh, this actually reduces the size of the image. That way you don't have to download a huge image with all the packages already on it. So let's go ahead and select that and We'll get going here. As you can see, we're starting to download. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and download and install VirtualBox. Uh, you can do this by going to virtualbox.org. VirtualBox is a free virtualization software where you can virtualize m machines and run them along your host operating system. Uh, this is fairly simple. As soon as you get to uh, virtualbox.org, you'll see this big download VirtualBox with the latest stable version. Go ahead, click that, and then you're going to get to um, what type of platform package you want to choose from. So it says Windows hosts, OS X hosts, di uh, then you got the uh, Linux distributions. So what we want, I have um, OS X, so I am going to go ahead and select that. If you have a Windows computer, you can go ahead and select the Windows hosts and download that file. It'll be very similar. Uh, the install of the Debian 10 image will be exactly the same. So um, choose whichever one you have, Windows or OS X. You can see that we are downloading that now. I am going to go ahead and skip the install of this. I'll let you handle that. It's fairly simple. You just run through an installer and then you're finished. After you have VirtualBox installed on your computer, whether it be Windows or Mac OS X, go ahead and open it up and you'll get a similar screen to this. Now you can go ahead and follow along on either operating system because it's very similarly laid out. We're gonna go ahead and select the new button here and let's go ahead and just call this a Debian. You can call it whatever you want, doesn't really matter. The machine folder, you can go ahead and select where you wanna go ahead and save the virtual machine to. Uh, the default's fine for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a Debian 10 so I can distinguish it later. Uh, the type is Linux. That's already pre-filled because it realized that we were typing in Debian up here and it just guessed with the 64-bit. Uh, you could have also chosen 32-bit, but it's selected right because we did download a 64-bit image. So let's go ahead and keep that Debian 64-bit. Next, we'll go ahead and hit continue down here. And it's asking for what memory size we want to allocate to the virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and allocate 4 gigs. I believe you need at least 2 gigs of memory allocated to the Debian system. Uh, if you know the exact amount, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Let everyone know. Uh, hit continue after this. Next, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to create a new virtual hard disk. Uh, it says the recommended uh, amount of space is 8 gigs. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit create. 
Now we have a selection of what file type, uh, VHD, VMDK, or VDI. VDI is native to the virtual box, so we're just going to keep it that. You can also select these other two. You can read up on them if you want. Go ahead and hit continue. And here we get the option of whether we want to dynamically allocate the hard disk or fix it. So we're going to let, allow it to be dynamically allocated. All that means is you can change the amount of storage space on the disk after the fact. So hit continue. Next, uh, we're asked how many gigs do we want to go ahead and allocate as our storage space. Um, so here is something interesting. Um, Debian, Debian seems to have a problem uh, installing on anything less than 32 gigs. Uh, at least I've ran into issues before. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it to uh, 32 GB here. Um, that way uh, I don't run into any problems. Uh, you can read up on this. Um, I've gotten install errors before going under 32 gigs. And my thought is it leaves a lot of storage for the swap, like 4 gigs, and it doesn't actually have enough to install the entire Debian image on if you don't increase the size here. So 32 gigs or above is, is safe, so let's go ahead and do that. Hit create. Hopefully you have 32 gigs to spare. Uh, then once you have created the machine, go ahead and hit start. And since it's a brand new machine, we'll get a pop-up here that says that the optical disk for the physical drive is empty. And uh, what we want to do is go ahead and fill that drive with uh, the image that we downloaded from the internet, Debian 10 AMD 64 net installer. Go find that on your file browser, wherever you had downloaded it to and saved it. Select it open it and then you can go ahead and hit start. You can also do this a different way. I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to turn off this machine. The other way we can do it is go and right click, hit settings. This might be for older versions of VirtualBox. It's good to know. Hit the storage. You'll see this controller named IDE. It's currently empty. Select a little CD icon and then you can go ahead and choose your virtual optical disk file. You can again tr choose your ISO image wherever it's located. Hit open. Hit OK. And now you can go ahead and hit start and you won't get that warning anymore. What we'll do here since it's so small, we're going to scale this up a little bit. I'm going to maximize this and then we can go to view. If you go to your virtual screen, let's um, scale it up a bit, maybe even a little bigger just to be able to see it better. There we go. We're going to go ahead and use the graphical install because we're beginners here. Go ahead, press enter, let it do its thing. You can exit out of this. It's just warning you about a couple things. No worries there. First thing it's going to ask you is what language do you run, want to run the installer on? English for me. You can either double click on English or hit the continue button once it's selected. You can do this for almost any of these screens. Uh, United States, that's where I'm located. It's asking for a location later because it's going to ask you for a time zone. Uh, American English is the keyboard I have, so I'll go ahead and select that default. It's going to do a couple things here. Remember to go ahead and like if you've made it this far. I'm glad you're sticking around with me. Just detecting the network now. That way I can download packages later. You'll have to make sure that you are actually connected to the internet. Uh, host name. This is what the rest of the network will know you as. Debian's fine for me, so I'm just going to use the default. A domain name. I don't have one, so I won't put one in. Continue root password so this is the super user password so put something in here you have to create a super user you'll also get prompted to create your own user here in a moment and here is a full name for the new user that I was talking about I'm just gonna call him savvy Nick and then the next will be a username for him 
So I'm just going to use Savvy Nick again for the account. It's going to ask you for a password for that account. So put in your password that you'd like to have. Hit continue. And now we're just going to configure a few more things. Uh, first, the time zone. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Arizona time zone. You can select whatever yours is. It's going to go through a few more things here to partition the disk. Um, we have a few options here. The manual option, we don't want that since we're beginners. You have the LVM encrypted or non encrypted option. Um, that's just really to be able to change the amount of storage space you have um, after the fact so we really don't care about that at this point so let's go ahead and just use the entire disk since we're beginners hit continue now it's going to specify which hard disk you want to use since we have only one that we created for this virtual machine we only have one selection so go ahead and select that all files in one partition recommended for new users since this is recommended we'll go ahead and use that it also has two more options to separate uh, your partitions um, we won't do that since that's more advanced go ahead hit continue uh, so now it's just uh, giving you a little bit of a overlook of what it's what your um, hard disk is going to look like after it's partitioned uh, you have your primary and your logical, so swap, and then your storage. Go ahead, hit the finishing partitioning and writing the changes to the disk. Uh, and then here's where the warning comes. After this step, it erases everything that's currently on that storage space. And since we went ahead and allocated our storage for the virtual machine specifically, we shouldn't have any problems. But uh, after this step, it's going to erase anything on the storage space you selected. Go ahead, hit yes, and write the changes if you're positive that there's no data. And then we're going to install a few things here before we get asked a few more questions. Here we're asked if we want to go ahead and insert another CD or DVD in order to go ahead and install maybe some external packages that we have. We don't have any, so we'll select no and hit continue. Finally, it's asking what mirror you want to use from what country. Uh, United States is fine here. It's going to go ahead and select a mirror for us, uh, closest to us based on what country we selected. So we'll go ahead and hit continue here. If you have any HTTP proxy information, you'll enter it into here. It gives you an example of how to enter that in if you have it. Uh, we don't, or I don't, so I'll hit continue. And now we're getting asked if we want to participate in the package usage survey. Um, this will gather statistics for the Debian developer community. If you want to go ahead and participate, I'm going to go ahead and select no for this install and hit continue. And now we get to the software selection portion of the Debian installer. Uh, we want to make sure that we go ahead, this is important, to select a desktop environment that we want to install. Otherwise, Debian comes standard with just a terminal prompt. Uh, you would get loaded to basically a black screen where you can enter in commands. So I want to go ahead and select one. We'll select, let's see here, GNOME is fine for me. Uh, do I need a print server? No, I don't. Uh, the standard system utilities are fine. You can select these if you need them, the web server, the print server, the SSH server. Uh, do not select multiple uh, desktop environments. They will clash and your install will not successfully finish. Go ahead and continue once you've selected one. You can also look through the different types of desktop environments online and choose the one that you like the most or the setup that you like the most. After this it's going to take a little bit and install the rest of the packages.
after those install steps are finished, it's going to ask you if you want to install the group bootloader. You'll need this in order to go ahead and boot into Debian, so of course we want it. All it's asking if it wants to go ahead and write it to the master boot record. So uh, we're going to go ahead and since that was our only disk, we're going to say yes and hit continue. It allows you to go ahead and enter that device manually. Again, since we only have the one device, we're going to go ahead and select it, allow it to go ahead and install Grub on there. And now it's just finalizing the installation. Shouldn't be too much longer here. And now it says that our installation is complete. So we're allowed to go ahead and reboot it. Hit continue. And it's going to reboot the system, as you can see and here uh, we'll automatically go ahead and load in after a few seconds and now it's just going to go through some system startup checks let's let that happen close out up here and it looks like we got something so it's asking for a user login. Savvy Nick was a user we made, so I'm going to go ahead and put his password in to sign in. And welcome to your new Debian 10 Buster desktop screen. Uh, now you have a virtual machine with Debian 10 on it. It still isn't uh, scaled properly because uh, we haven't installed the guest edition CD image on here that just uh, adds some drivers between Debian and the um, virtualization software and helps you correct the resolution and uh, adds a couple tools that you can use between them. I'm going to go ahead and save that for another video so if you got this far go ahead and look for that video. I'll include a link below. I hope you enjoyed following through with me on this tutorial of how to install Debian 10 Buster on VirtualBox. And if you did enjoy this, please like, subscribe, and comment below. I look forward to seeing you in another video.